And so I said, well, let's run with this. Let's then develop this as an opportunity for you to uh, make an argument and to have a reasonable uh, discussion in the form of a debate where you use your historical knowledge of Haiti and the lenses to make some point to support whether you believe in the relief efforts or, or not. The definition of formal, right, in this context is it has rules. So this debate, is okay, no cursing. good, beautiful. Let's write that down because the rules are going to come from all of us. No cursing. No cursing. No N-word. Okay, everybody write it down because everybody is going to be held to the same standard and you're going to compete as teams. So your team is going to be as strong as your weakest link. Okay? It turned out to be a very exciting project. Uh, who's, the, who's the captain? All right, Sean. I'm going to just defer to Sean. And well, well Europe is giving them $616 million. The kids were inspired to go much deeper with their research because they really needed as much information as possible to be able to support their position. Like the kids go hungry, they only get like two dollars a day. So they also had to learn each other's arguments very well to be able to argue their own side uh, effectively, which of course is what the great debaters do. And so it gave them all this really rounded understanding of what was going on in Haiti. And of course they had to know it through all six lenses uh, that way also because of the way that they would have to be able to argue anything that came their way. Look up talk directly to me, pretending I'm the opposition. Both sides took it very seriously and did amazing amounts of research. Haiti had received over $4 billion in donations. Every time I walked into one of those classes, those groups were so focused. And they were also pretty passionate about their positions, although the side that was saying we shouldn't help Haiti, actually pretty much everybody on that side eventually said, but no, we really do want to help Haiti. <laughs> Not in the official debate, of course, because that would have lost them points, but you know, in the classroom themselves. The thing is, the best listener wins a debate. And the most respectful person wins a debate. One of the things that I think I'm, I, I try to illustrate for my teachers is to take risk. And when you find yourself in that place where you've taken the risk, understand and know when you do have to draw people in. Use of facts and statistics and understanding of your topic, your score just went up 50%. Albeit lately, I had to go to Mr. Harrell and say, I don't know how to do this debate thing. I really don't. I looked up resources on the internet and I'm getting different, different types of resources. Um, but then I realized that we have someone on staff that that's pretty much what he did when he was a classroom teacher. The best thing you can do is split this up into specific people being experts on specific topics. So I wasn't afraid to go to Mr. Harold at the last minute and say, Mr. Harold, could you, you know, come in and help us? This is how you've been graded on your debate. It's one through four on these six topics. Understanding, presentation, information, facts and statistics, respect for other team and rebuttal. The students were given very, very clear direction. It was clear okay, to them so that if they didn't meet the requirements or follow the rules that they would lose points, which nobody wanted to do. The pros are arguing for USAID toward, to Haiti through the category of the six lenses they've studied. The cons are arguing against aid to Haiti. We had the debate. It was set up very formally. Okay, so we'll start with the opening statement. Once we get into the lenses, each team will have two minutes to argue their point and a one-minute rebuttal. And Mr. Okay. Harrell had uh, sketched out a really nice format for us. If we put money in Haiti's hands and Haiti's government, what's going to happen in a few years in the long run? They're going to need more. It was really remarkable how well the students did. When times was rough over there, they asked for money. 2008, they had a flood. I was in tears. I was in tears several times throughout the debate. How serious they took the debate and how serious they took their arguments. They're given aid on the condition that they privatize public services so um, this, this can have an effect on the economy. I understand they say that the Haitian government stole $504 million from the Haitian Treasury, but Honestly, every civilian in Haiti should not have to suffer because of what happened in the past. The students, all of them, changed their attire for this debate. And to see both groups of those students standing, passionately arguing their point in a very respectful manner um, warmed my heart, but also, again, uh, showed me the power of debate in classroom settings, particularly ones where you have students 
who have not had much success but also had a, a difficult time engaging in the subject matter. Sarah water is polluted with disease, which causes 30,000 of them to die each year. I think it's important that our youngsters gain a broader understanding of life beyond and outside their borders. And for many of our students, those borders are basically the Bronx, period. I agree with what Amanda said 100%. And I felt that we, it was an opportunity to make a personal connection to something very abstract. But then I also think that we as teachers have to take the moment and pounce on an opportunity to really do something that's timely, but still relevant to the goals of the course or the particular class. Our money's being sent over there and it's not really reaching the people. I mean, this whole learning um, activity really did appeal to the kids' sense of personhood uh, and the type of person that they saw and see themselves as a member of a broader uh, community. The total points which judges the debate was 780 to 775. It was only a five-point difference, and the winner was the pros. Oh!